Call the meeting to order. In the signature folder, we had a couple of intents to cut. Uh, one uh, veterans widow exemption. Uh, it was a disabled veteran, and I think that was it. A bunch of minutes, but uh, make a motion to prove the manifest dated February 8th in the amount of $426,356.90. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Most of that was the school, as you can guess. Seems like. Right. Um, make a motion to approve the Board of Selectmen work session minutes dated January 12th. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Make a motion to approve the work session minutes dated January 18th. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 And make a motion to approve the selectmen's minutes of January 22nd. Second. <laughs> Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 I make a motion to approve the work session minutes dated January 29th. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I make a motion to approve work session minutes dated February 1st. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, you can text Aye. Rebecca. Um, in the mail folder, we had uh, something to do with the the. Uh, Census and the Department of Revenue Administration telling us the uh, the sales ratio and stuff. The assessment sixty percent of the three point three percent. Yeah, that was from DRA and then the census. Seems like we just get over the census and they're already talking. I had your name on the chalk, by the way. So. And just pass that off to you. <laughs> yeah, you had to use the contact person on it. We'll update it. Yeah, you get it corrected. Come right in, Rebecca. Oh, I said, could have come crap in the back yeah, all you gotta do is knock on that door. I could have. I thought of it as it's halfway down the wall. How's it going? Okay. Slow down. Yeah, it did slow down. Yeah. Well, I mean, I expected it to be quiet in December and January, but it's still kind of slow. We'll see as weather gets warmer, whether it picks up. Yeah, you have one uh, solar array and one, one building permit. Yeah, and I've got a. Tentative, tentative another building for Nutter Meadows. You know, Lisa Goodell yeah. place down there. Um, they, the preliminary inquiry, the subdivision got all finalized and everything, but she hasn't got her septic permit yet. So that was sort of, that came in. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's about it. And Bill's been all right. You've been getting all of him to sign off on the. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that, yeah. Uh, that works pretty smoothly. I put all the paperwork in David's office, and he and sent him an email copy to David. That way, David can alert him if he's taken the file somewhere, or you know, the, the yeah. application part of it out for good inspection or something. So that's that's gone very smoothly. Good. He hasn't hung me up at all, and uh, no. good. Any other issues? Any other issues? No, I got uh, um, uh, the the WhatsApp that I that I sent out that are on here. Um, uh, the um, the one that I was mostly concerned about, um, the Chamber Hill Road one. I haven't gotten a response. That was an that was an official letter. The other the other ones I just sent emails to, just sort of a heads up kind of thing. Which one's that? Sud. Hmm? Sud. Sud, that's a, that's 44 Champion Hill Road. That's a, a multifamily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, absentee landlord 
So it's very possible that the owner doesn't even know what's going on there. So it's a usual. This is what's happening on your property. You need to know that what, what's going on there is not allowed. And the other two, the, you have response for? No, I haven't had have no response at all. Exactly. No, no. They, so, but again, that just went out <clears throat> last week. I mean, I got back from, I was, yeah. I was away for two weeks and then a week of sort of catching up with what was on the ground. Okay. Um, so. So I have a question. Sure. There was a lengthy application packet from DES. It was forwarded from DES to the planning board. Did you receive that for a wetlands dredging on the backside of Providence Lake? I don't get those. It was quite an extensive packet. Yeah. Had a cover photo of the structure of the house. Um, and it's down in Remick Road. Uh huh. So it did uh, pose the question. I tried to go back and some of the reports that I have. Um, so the picture of the structure was taken from the lakefront. Yeah. And you can actually see it from 153. Well, at least I can. Um, looking all the way back towards the campground from the south side of the lake. I'm like, boy, that's an awful lot of zip board on the front of that building. And lo and behold, we get this packet from DES, and there's a picture of the structure, and the whole front of it's covered with zipboard. Um, so at some point in time, they started remodeling that structure. So do you remember what, seeing a permit? For what address are we talking about? I mean, I've issued permits over the last 10 years. I've issued permits all up and down Remick Road. So big ones and little ones and complete rebuilds of structures and stuff like that. So um you know, I mean, it could, there's, there's one guy in there who I think he took down a little house and built probably the maximum amount that's allowed on that size lot, but he got all the permits for the it. The house just sold. I, I just didn't know if it would stand out. Unfortunately, I don't have it. You yeah. Know, the George kept the packet. Um, right. And, and it's and, paperwork, but it, I didn't know if it would like stand out. The house just sold, believe it or not, on Problems Lake for almost $800,000. So Sometimes, it used to be sometimes that I got copies of the cover letters of those things. And I don't know whether it was just something that Gwen used to do as part of what came through the office, that there'd be that there'd be a, a wetlands thing. Because the... Um, the uh, the shoreland stuff, the shoreland side of it, there's a file in the town clerk's office where all the shoreland permit stuff are kept. Um, but it used to be that that I would get copy just on a cover letter of those things so I would know what was going on. It wouldn't have anything to do with a build, building permit or zoning permit application, but it would sort of put me in the loop and I'd, I'd at least be able to say, oh yeah, I I saw that. I know I know the piece of property we're talking about, but I don't I don't have any idea what piece of property it is and uh, mm -hmm. otherwise I could I could go and look and see um see what the status of it is um so and I don't caught I don't get copied yeah. on what if the zip board there it must be a building permit right I, so. yeah it's just without knowing what piece of property we're talking about yeah. I mean as I said you know the, the, the last the last 10 12 years we've seen an enormous amount of development on that stretch of property of of people taking those little those little cottages and either just you know upgrading them a little bit or or really turning them into little little mm -hmm. mansions that are just you know just barely squeezing onto the lot and uh so it isn't like i i could say oh well there's only one that this has happened to it's all up and down up um down down where it goes down into the wetlands and then up the other side at the far end um there's there's two lots in there that have been just recently developed in the last five years with brand new structures um and as i say if you go down the road and turn left there's um in the third or fourth house down the guy just did this incredible remodel two and a half stories and everything and we don't you know as long as it meets the height limit we don't we don't say anything about the square footage number of floors. We just talk about the, the footprint. And the and the height thing is, is pretty easy to meet because it's based on an average height of the highest and lowest roofs. So oh, not not hard to stay within that. I'm sorry, I'd like to 
excuse me, as far as like the wetland, the dredging stuff, that's nothing you have to sign off on. No, I don't sign off on that. I mean, the, 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 um, the planning board signs up, signs off on that and the state signs off on it because it's, it's shoreland. So it's, it's when it's, they it doesn't have, fall in your head. Yeah. I mean, they have to follow, they, they have to follow, um, short state shoreland requirements for permits and stuff. But if it's actual dredge and fill, then, then the shoreland doesn't supersede necessarily the planning board. Um, the way the zoning ordinance is written is that for a certain amount of wetlands work, the, um, the Shoreland Protection Act takes precedent over the town stuff, which means that if someone gets shoreland, they don't have to go to right. the planning board. But I don't think that's true of dredge and fill because dredge and fill is a, is a whole different category. Just, just the way excavation is falls under a completely different statute, or a completely different section. No, it was just there was a, a bit of a discussion and attempt to educate and stuff the other night. Yeah. Obviously, for the conversation. So the um, the bridge structure on 153 just shot south of fire station. There was no permit for you for that either, right? Just south of the fire station. 153 across the South River. Doesn't really have a number, does it? I think it does, but it's yeah, it's for us. Yeah, I'm checking the other side. Oh, that that bridge, um, that did go through me. They had um, so that's the that's the driveway bridge on the, the access that property on the left that right. used to just be accessed by a footbridge. Right, right. Because I remember giving them that permits for the new footbridge twenty, well, fifteen years ago when it got washed away. Um, yeah, I'm pretty okay. sure. That I did give a permit for that after they showed that they had all the state permits in place. And what would that permit consist of? Was it a driveway permit or was it? Uh, it was probably a driveway permit. Yeah, I don't know. I'm that would have been done last year, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I don't think I've ever required when in last a structure last fall. permit for a bridge. And in that situation, I would think that if the state, all the state wetland stuff had been met, that, uh, I mean, I suppose someone could argue that I should have given a structure permit as well as a driveway permit, but probably the first time I've had, uh, had that come across my desk. The bridge is asked, do they assess the bridge like that? I would think it would be part of your property assessment, yeah. you know, the evaluation of your property. You, Accessibility and things like that. I mean, right, but the driveway might even have been the year before. It yeah. took them a long time to get the permits, get everything together there. Yeah, I don't remember the name. I'm thinking it was something kind of like Watson, but that. You did the 14 permits out for driveway last year. Yeah, I mean, a lot of driveway permits. Really, the only way I can, you know, track something down. In my stuff is is to identify your piece of property I went by a name or a lot map and lot or or looking at the map and going oh yeah that's the one and then i can identify and go back i went by there one day and it was snow on the ground the bridge builder and the state and some engineers i take it were all there and that was it had to be last winter so yeah 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 so it, it could have been even before that and so 2022 is when it may have started it could have been, yeah, it could have been 22 or early 2020. So, you do you want Rebecca to research and find out if we do have a permit? Yeah, if you want mine. Yeah. What do you want to find out? If that was a permit, permitted, that bridge needed a permit. So, that's so so going to see if you issue a permit. No, it's cracked open. Well, I don't issue a permit for the driveway. Because they're going to tear the camp down and build a house. And... Oh, okay. I don't want to. Well, I'm a map. Probably I have though. Maybe it was you that told me that. Um, just do some research on this. Lot number. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's always helpful. I mean, you know, sometimes I can just pick up I pick up on it right away. And other times, you know, I'm gonna just have to go off and do the digging. But if if one of you has a concern about a piece of property having either the street address, the map and lot, or the property owner, oh. um, it's, it's really helpful. Because otherwise I'm gonna have to dig for it. Um we had it. Yeah, so understandable. And the guy that built the bridge was the one that built the snow over bridge. Oh, same yeah. In fact, I saw him the year even before the snow, and he was headed over there because, and he wasn't even sure where he was going. So people wanted to put a bridge across the river. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I do remember so the state probably, application. Probably 20, 22 when that Yeah, started. I remember. The, I remember the state application. Um, and I remember I have a pretty good memory of talking about um. It's a little deep for that talking about it with uh, someone um, in terms of, you know, what was required at the town level. Uh, it was a driveway permit. But uh, I'm thinking that it was just a driveway permit at that point. It's not 411, walk two. Thank you. Okay. Well, I will look into it. Um, you know, I could take up your time going through back data here, but it'd be quicker to go into the computer and yeah. do the search. No problem. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. I'm good. And is the concern just was there a driveway permit, or did you yeah. want me to explore whether we thought the town was supposed to require a zoning permit know, asked, or a bridge? Chris, he's the one who brought it up. Okay. Yes. Whether or not there was a permit holder, any permits that you had to issue for that. For that property. Yeah. Okay. I mean, state roads, so I'm sure the state gave them a permit. Yeah, the state did. I remember the state permit very well. Filled with filled with detail. Um, but I don't remember what else went around it other than when they came to me, you know, my memory is that I gave them a driveway permit, um, but I don't remember anything else. And as I said, I don't, I think I would probably remember if I went, aha, you need a structure permit for a driveway bridge. And I don't think so. I don't think that falls I don't think so given that the, I mean, given that they're already getting a permit, it's already in the record there. Well, the state manages that pretty much. I mean, I want to bridge one over a waterway. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Strictly yeah. That. yeah. Uh, no, the breeding is going to occur. So, uh, yeah. oh, thanks. This is 418. Was that the one off our list? Yeah. It's been 98. Okay. Uh, right well back, we had a lot of light investment with two rocks down on the remnant so that. Yeah, I remember that one. This wasn't it. I, I think these guys were just in touch with me. They're right at the corner. Um, you come down, you come down past the campground off Bonnyman, and then there's a sharp right where you run along between the river and and Dow Remick's property. That's all wetland according to this map, and then you make a sharp turn to the left, and I think this is like the second or third house in, and I have a feeling that they already contacted me because the name Susan sounds familiar, but I'd have to go and look and. Um, see what I have. Thank you. I'll look into both of those. 
what would you like me to do? I mean, we you know we can wait till the next month's report but on something like that that, that that you guys have an inquiry about. Um, if you say anything, if you know, if you have any comments, or just if you should be an email or whatever, some renovations okay. and just let me know. All right, show sure, you a copy of the other two gentlemen on it. Okay. If you want mine. Nope, happy to do that. See what I find out. I want to bring up this to change the report or not. The wording is referred um, to. That was an issue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some people took, <clears throat> took exception to the fact that we put down citizen complaint. Can we pull up? <laughs> What do they want me to put down? Anonymous complaint? Nothing. Just, yeah. I guess just complain. Or, or I don't know. Well, I just wanted to clarify that it was something that showed up from the yeah. external as opposed to something that I picked up on my rounds. Yeah. So that's all. I mean, some people had put exception to it. People take exception to a lot of things, don't they? What are we doing today? Environment. Yep. Um, <laughs> I was just looking for that. You all of a sudden we back up I am. Thank you very much. Yeah. I was doing a quick look to see if I had gotten a call from Season because I do remember a conversation. But anyway, I'll look and see what I've done. Thank you. Yeah. Nothing Thank else? You. Okay. Beef. <laughs> this has up here if anybody wants to look at them. I did something a little different and I actually pulled the yearly from last year just so everybody can get an idea. I'll do those first if you'd like. Okay. In 2023, the Effingham Police Department and the Carroll County Sheriff's Department handled 3,422 calls for service here in town which resulted in 47 arrests, 594 motor vehicle stops. There were 39 motor vehicle accidents. And then since K-9, Jesse and I were teamed up after school in September, she's been, she was deployed 22 times between September 1st and the end of December. So it's quite a... She was busy. Yeah, we were very busy the yeah. end of last year. And then rolling into this month, we're off to a really, really busy start. I actually, when I pulled the last year's stats, I think our calls for service in January were last year were 214 or 219. And this year we're at 301 calls for service in January. So we added quite a few calls for service. Um, two arrests this month, or last month, excuse me, 46 motor vehicle stops, uh, three motor vehicle accidents, and then the canine was deployed one time and it was for a drug sniff and it was on my own motor vehicle stop. And I'm actually gonna start breaking that down a little bit more for the deployments to sh that way everybody can see, you know, she was deployed for this, this and that. So just a little bit more transparency just so everybody knows because she's got so many different things that she can do. It just shows how much she's utilized for each of those things every month. Any, any questions? Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. Very Thank much. You. Good work. Watch out. Leo, <laughs> <laughs> right. um, you got anything you want to talk about? No. No. Chris? Yeah, we started hauling sand today to transfer station. Um, should take um, about 10, uh, trying to remember, uh -huh. 10 loads will get us there. So um, Mills was the, they matched the price and the hauling is the same distance, it's actually a little bit closer. So um, it's good material. I went and inspected the material on a day off one day, went into the pit down there. Um, and it's, it's good material, so. Within the next couple of days, they should have the sand built back up. Hopefully, we don't need it. I'm hoping that this is a sign of an early spring. Mm -hmm. I just assume get more sleep as opposed to more money. So, you believe the woodchuck? 
I don't, I don't believe that woodchuck. I think if you went home and you looked at the calendar and you counted the days, it's six weeks of winter left regardless. So, um, well, this is just January thaw. Yeah, I do know with the forecast coming up, uh, we need to have a conversation about um, the summer roads contract and making an appointment to get them in here because I think that the dirt roads are going to soften up, particularly as you. Uh, the aprons when you come off and the state road in particular where there's a lot of salt um, they get very rough and we're going to have to address those at some point in time because they're going to become so impassable um, I know there's a couple of them already you've got to kind of pick and choose your lane and what you're traveling so um, we're going to have to really get going on that um, come, uh, excuse me Thursday evening or Thursday afternoon at 3.30, I'm meeting with another tree company on Pine River Road just to get yet another quote on the trees, uh, removal of the trees. Um, yeah, that's all I have to address right now. Yeah. Um, Chuck, you want to talk about you know, thank you. Sure. Can I ask one question? And Chris, while we still yeah. on that subject of trees, my understanding was that Osby owns right up to the edge of the pavement, which means the trees are in Osby. They're not. That's not. They're not. Perfect. The town of Osby doesn't own that. That's the state of New Hampshire's land. It was up to a certain point, but not all the way up to the side of the road. Yeah. State of New Hampshire's land. I've already contacted four property owners that need to give permission for us to. The only thing that the town of Osby has is an easement for the water and sewer line. That's it. Okay. The water and sewer line, if you come in from 16, you can see the marker right at where the town line across is. You can see the orange and green, uh, excuse me, green and blue markers. And the town of Osby has an, an easement um, across those same four pieces of property um, that I need to needed to contact. Um, that was the confusion, but the easement was the easement, easement is the town of Osby. Everything else is private landowners. Um, the first piece of property in there, which was another muddy water thing, that landowner, which was Irving White Jr., um, his wife, his widow Sharon, Sharon? I think. sorry, um, she has an easement through the state of New Hampshire because DOT or the state of New Hampshire actually owns right out to Pine River Road. In front of her house, so she has an easement to cross their property to get to her home. So, um, because I had her on the list of five, and then as it turned out, I don't have to contact her at all because it doesn't affect her. But that is the that's the the easement is what made things confusing. So. Perfect. Good. A number of years ago, we started looking at that with we may have someone on. Good. Um, I gave you a one pager. Yeah. Um, this is the last of the. Contractors for the 2024 work at the at the historic town hall library. This is for the Cloverleaf windows, uh, northern sash and joinery. So um, we ended up getting two bids. One's lower than this. The one lower than this had absolutely no information in it, other than we'll build you the windows and here's our price, which scares me a little bit because there was all kinds of exclusions that said, but if we do this, 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 all add on stuff. Um, this particular vendor reached out to me and said, not only I'll give you a price, but I really want to talk to the historic architect and nail down what would be required as part of this project. So actually Leo and I did a Zoom call with the contractor, with the historic architect. We spent like an hour and 15 minutes on the phone defining what we needed to do. Um, I had a concern from my initial discussion around Akoya wood, which is the acetic and um, an acetate impregnated wood, and it touching the building and eating stuff. I mean, literally, you have to install it with stainless steel screws that eats everything else, and you have to put barriers between the wood and the building, otherwise, it eats the building. And we were getting a little concerned at 50 to 60 feet up, not being able to inspect it, that that might be an issue. So now this is actually going to be done in mahogany. Um, rather than that wood. So it's going back more toward um, the historic piece. The other thing we asked him to consider doing was putting in the equivalent of a storm window. So once they they build the new buttons for the, the Cloverleaf windows for the two pieces that are up 
on the third floor, they'll actually build a storm on the front end of that. They'll come in behind the cloverleaf window. And then they're going to mount that so that the moisture can free up with the wind and the rain and water will come down through it. So it's a bit of a unique design. It's total custom. There's not nothing like this. There's nothing to go by. So that was why that discussion with the architect was really important. Um, the lift rental may come down a little bit. If we can, if the timing of this installation coincides with what we're going to do with the copper um, roof leak, seam leak up on the, in the cupola, we may be able to forego the lift rental. So that's a possibility where the price could come down, but I, I want to approve the maximum in case Probably, you know, timing isn't such that the contractors can work it out. Um, and um, I'm also going to reach out to the contractor and offer from a lodging standpoint to reduce some of the prices. And then he can basically um, stay at my place for the three four days. He's going to be working on this thing to get him in. He thinks it's going to be about a day for a window to get him in um, with what he wants to do. So the price for that installation total and, and the whole project is funded by Moose Plate Grant and LCHIP Grant. And so one of the Moose $20,000 Moose Plate Grants is specific to the Cloverleaf Windows. That was the last year's grant. So this is covered by the grants 100%. So the price tag on it is $39,785. Um, and I'm recommending we go, go with Northwood Sash and Green Ray for this work. Questions? Well, I'll make a motion to award Northwood Sash and Joinery, well, I and M, Northwood Sash and Joinery at Buffalo, New York, for $39,785. Chris, did you have a question? Uh, <clears throat> oh, I can second it and then we'll discuss it. Mm -hmm. And it's just some, uh, I'm going to second the motion. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. There was a discussion in the manifest. About this, does this have to do with this? Yes. So I meant, yes. Yeah, this was the yeah. number we were going to talk about. We're going to talk about after the after Yeah, the and there was one other one. Okay. But. So the, you did the manifest tonight, you did a 50% deposit for the belt. Yeah. It's totally different than yeah. this. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, obviously it's kind of late now, but I just learned this information over the weekend. Just for future reference, yeah. when you talk to these guys, just ask them if you wouldn't mind. Just ask them if they've ever worked with um, the wood from a jackfruit tree. So I'm going to try to make this fast, Mr. Chairman. Okay. <laughs> so I went to the grocery, went to the grocery store, went to the grocery store with my grandson on Saturday, and there was an approximate 30 pound fruit at the Hannaford and Conway, this big, this big yeah. green, pokey thing. And it was huge. It was awesome. So I wound up researching it, and it's called the jackfruit. And uh, India is one of the locations where they are, Indonesia, places like that. These things grow a couple hundred of these jackfruits that are giant on this tree. You definitely want to be wearing a hard hat, 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 hat. But <clears throat> so they said architects use the wood from a jackfruit tree for historic projects. And I was like, so it says that it's the new replacement. And it was in parentheses. It could be a new replacement for mahogany. But it was called the jackfruit tree. Yeah. Okay. Which is very strong because if you could, if you like research this and you look at the jackfruit tree and you see these 30, 40, I mean, they, they range from softball size to 36 to 38 inches in length and range anywhere between five pounds and 75 pounds or something like that. The tree right now with, the fruits. with a couple hundred of these on them, it's like, that's a strong tree. Yeah. So, yeah. So we can actually still take a look at that. Clip. We're, I mean, we're, we've got, this is the proposal, but he's going to do some shop drawings for us and get specifics with it. And if, if we, and I'll do some homework on this and send it to him. And there's some good comparison capabilities out there around for the different types of wood and the rot resistant capabilities of it. One of the things I was not aware of, because I always thought mahogany was like the best thing since sliced bread. It used to be if it's original hard growth, old growth, that's old growth that grow it on the plantations now. The plantation is not as good as it was anymore. And that's one of the reasons the acoya, the acoya is being used in Europe extensively. 
and it's just coming to the states where it's kind of new that was my apprehension on it not being able to watch it yeah yeah um but i can look into this and i can actually put this out to him and he can research it and it comes back where this be a better fit than what he's looking at with this mahogany we can have that discussion okay. yeah it says a superior a superior to uh teak teak wood very compatible to teak okay which teak is very good wood yep. uh termite resistance all that furniture doors windows roof construction i'll i'll reach out to him and ask it there's no, mm -hmm. no reason why we can't he hasn't started cutting anything yet so oh we got plenty of time yeah. Good. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes, no. Yeah, we're ready. Yeah, you want to vote? Yeah. Great. Okay. All in favor? Bye. 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 <clears throat> Thank you. And then the manifest question that wasn't per se, that was just to clarify it was right to make sure it got posted the right place, right? Yeah, yeah the energy audit, yes, yeah, that's right. that that is a grant. Well, they have they have it listed, or they should have it listed because I sent it to them. What is, what's it listed on? It should be 2023 CDFA grant under the 7,000 grant line. It should be. It's not listed. I will follow up. A 2023. I will guess. follow up. It should be listed as a separate grant item. So what's it called? CDFA grant. CDF? CDFA. Community Development Finance yeah. Authority. And that covers the 75%? Covers the 75% of the... From the other 25. 1300 comes out of Okay. So it's a $3,900 grant. Yeah, 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 I know. Um, well, the other $1,300 will come out of... Which category? DPS, DPS checkbook. It's a grant. It's all, it's all grant. doesn't go okay. anything. It doesn't go above the 7000 line at all. It stays okay. everything in the So it goes into the H. It comes out of each the preservation. Correct. So, so, it's, so when, when we do the accounting part of it, $1,300 will go into the EPS Correct. line item underneath that. Then that will go against the CDFA grant and they'll wash out zero to zero. Okay, but she didn't do that, right? Yeah, no, she put it under uh, I'll work on building, right? building I'll work maintenance on or something. Okay. Did we get the bill in? Did the CDFA bill come in? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it did. Okay, yeah, I didn't really pay that. Okay. That's what we're asking. Okay, good. Yeah. Nope. Let me make sure it's part of I will work on that this week. Yeah, she had 1,300 tax to building. Building maintenance or nope. expense of the to pull it out. No, nope. yeah, if it's not in if it's not in the grant, she wouldn't know. Yeah. I don't think. That's what I was I was questioning. I won't work on that. Thank I you. didn't realize it came in. I knew it was coming. I just didn't realize it came in. Mm -hmm. Manifest. All right. Um the website okay. proposal. My turn? Yep. All right, so last Wednesday, Wednesday, I met with SoundCloud. They are a website company. Um, they previously had conversations with the previous town administrator. They reached out to me and I completed a demo. They have two applications. They have the website and they have an agenda side. So they showed me both of those. Um, I was very pleased. The website itself, very easy to navigate compared to the website we have now. Um, pretty much, if you wanted to look for something specific in minutes, you could go on, you could search one word, and it pulls up every set of minutes that contains that word. And you can look and see, you know what, this is the date I want. Um, I really like the idea that it's easier to navigate. The agendas are right on the home page, set with the date instead of, for example, the Board of Selectmen, you'll see the date and time on the side, and then you have to navigate each page to go and find the agenda minutes. Everything is right there, right on the home page. If you ever wanted to look at an example, Middleton, New Hampshire has Town Cloud. Um, 
takes about three to four weeks. If you guys were to approve it tonight, it takes three to four weeks to have the website up and running. Um, if we pay forward for three years, we skip out on the setup fee of, I believe it was $350. That gets wiped out. We get a 30% discount and it's 37, 37.54 for three years. And that's including both the agenda side where I create the agendas and minutes and the website. You went on Middleton's, right? Yeah, I was like, yeah. Right. So you when you do create your agenda and minutes, that would be automatically yeah, into the site. To the website. So yeah. I won't have to go onto the website and navigate five different things just to get the agenda on. And as soon as I go ahead and hit publish, it's already on site. Where would That's the right on the homepage? 3754 come out of the computer? If you look at 4130. Yeah. Um, I mean I know um 4130 we have a website entry for a salary. Oh um, yeah. Obviously four thousand bucks. Um, but that right there does have I remember what it was last time. It has thirty nine fifty six remaining in that right. well. Yeah. So we wouldn't have to utilize uh Pisa anymore on this. Correct. Because I would be the only admin if I were to sign if we were to go through with it. What's the annual hosting when you go buy your three year deal? So when you get buy a three year deal, um I have it right there again. They could do different things. I did get a monthly fee. I don't know what it would be annually. I could definitely ask them be very responsive. Um so you get you pay for each admin. So I went based off one admin, which would be myself. Um, the website is a hundred dollars a month and fifty dollars a month for the admin. Um, I don't know what the deal would be if you pay yearly every year, but that would be what the price would be every month after the three year deal. But it would be signed in for three years. Is there a um hourly charge for them to do additional work later on? Let's say you want, make, you want to make a change. What mm -hmm. type of uh, style, out of date? Not what they said to me. They said, you know, pretty much with this price, um, I can contact them anytime if I ever were to have a question. Um, no fee if I had questions. So I know what it is post three years because then wouldn't be. Yeah. It's that time. All right. I'll have to. I'll have to reach out. Mm -hmm. All right. Then I'll reach out to them. Peter Wears is all too. Yeah, nope, I have that. Yeah, it's the same company that came. Yeah, and gave yeah, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful site. Yeah. So, but good flex is putting. But it also is very, when they were showing me everything, it seemed very easy to do everything. So I'd say it's also very limited questions, but you never know if someone else needed to do something on it. And it's good to ask that, and I can ask them. Yeah. So you want to approve it on based on additional information. I pulled it tonight and then we'll but if she comes back with additional information or something about more then we can put a hold. When you're asking somebody that's not too the word there. So. <laughs> no, I'm just I, I'm just going forward with it so we can start impl implementing the the site onto our system onto account that so long that at the phase right now with the information we have pending further questions, it would be eighteen hundred dollars a year past for three years. Unless there's additional unless they do like a discount if you pay a whole year. But they never mentioned that to me. When I asked about this any subscription, that's when they want me to put every year amount. Oh yeah, you get thirty percent reduction. Yeah, I don't, want to, I don't want to delay it too long, but I'd like to have all the information for, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, credit cards changing from Spectrum to Dish Network and, you know, your fee, everything's free or it's reduced rate. And then after this, it's you pay on the leg next thing you know, you're switching back. Um, I'm not saying that that would happen here, but you know, okay. before I... But Chris, they, did have, they had a capability to say, if you do anything by the month, they would if you did the upfront three years, here's what it would be, and then the ongoing beyond that. So they 
they had the capability and they were willing to do a side by side to just show us what the prices was yeah. when they no, they talked to us a week back. I have to make sure they didn't say anything on the email to you. Do you want to put on hold until she gets the info? Oh, you want to. I'm good with either. I can I can reach out to them. I mean, at this point, responsive. So I feel we'll have it by you know next meeting or. Uh, you want to, yeah, it would have to. I mean, it would have to be pretty drastic additional costs on top of that because you're talking eighteen hundred dollars a year past the three years mm -hmm. as it's proposed right now. So that's less than half of what we are paying. So it would definitely give us wiggle room. I wouldn't want to have to get into that. But, yeah. Um, yeah, we can wait until you come back. With this. Yeah, I'll reach out to him tomorrow. Um, because I never knew that, so I appreciate you telling me that. You never said anything. And obviously, we have to have a discussion about that one. I mean, what's currently happening. Not blindsiding, but I don't think that that's fair. So. Well, it'll blow the line out. I mean, once we pay. Right. Right. But have you seen the contract? I'm pretty sure I won't be utilizing it. That's what I mean. I don't think that, you know, it's fair. It's just a blindsider. Got it. Make a little tonight without giving them a heads up. Well, already is the agent that is she going to take it over? Sign it up. Oh, yeah, he knows already. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Teresa is aware of it. And it may be worth taking over the contract too, just mm. to see some things surprising inside that. Mm. Did they send you a contract? No. But I'm going to ask them about it when they send me an email to you. Okay. Definitely I mean, I would get yeah. Well, yeah, like I said, Chuck, when Chuck announced that, they never mentioned that to me. So I'd rather figure that out first because, you know, if there's an additional charge. One more request for change of voice now. <laughs> <Please. laughs> also, I'll tell you this I changed, I did change my voicemail, but I don't know what I did after I changed it because now my direct line says no one's monitoring this. So that's a project that I got to figure out. But I will promise once I figure it out. I, I think there's an 800 number over to TCI that will actually help. There, there is, and I called it once before and I didn't ask at the time because I was focused on something else, but I will call them. Yeah, but Viper didn't say it. It's what you felt my back when I hear that. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else that she, HEB thing? Yeah, what do you want to do about HEB? I mean, so we can find uh, extra funds or get the budget here and tomorrow night we can increase it by 3,000 or whatever it is. You make that motion, Marn. <laughs> you put a lot of work into this in a lot of hours. We got it. So. Yeah. It's all the lights. Uh, I'm sure we can come up with the monitoring and all that stuff. We have a budget of thirteen thousand. They're, they're coming in with eighteen thousand one hundred. Is this the fifth year where we have to do the extra staff for the state? If every four or five years we have to do extra stuff that would stay within. I think we only have to do a thousand foot radius this time. Yeah, maybe so that about the. Uh, every, every, uh, every four or five years we have to do that for testing. Yeah, they because we, the first time around we had to do two thousand foot radius, but because our results came back so good, they reduced it to one thousand feet. But that's that's an every I think it's every four years, every five year requirement. And those tests are like seven hundred bucks a household. Yeah, and there's only uh, there's only two on the list. Actually, there's only one. It'd be the one right next to the, the river, right? Sona, get it closest. There was one north of Harriet the Grace, bridge Grace that showed up with. Oh, really? Yeah. One north of the bridge showed up with some results. It was a hand dug well. Yes, yeah, so under the management zone property list, there's only um, five listed and four of them are vacant property. So the only one that's got wells. Area Grace Thomas.
So it must be the 500 feet one. So what are you asking? Yes, so there's a requirement by the state. And I think it, you know, either this year, next year, whatever, that we, we within a thousand feet of the transfer station piece, all the wells have to re, be retested, be retested. All the households that have drinking water. And I didn't know if that was this year. Well, the last, the whole time, yeah. Okay. The last peak pass testing that was done in 2020, 2022, and 2023. Yeah, so five years for the next year. 2025, probably. But worth asking that one because that one, everything will bump up because the tests are so expensive for a household. Right. So it makes yeah. me wonder why this one is, you know, $5,000 more than what we were anticipating when we cut the budget. And we did increase it by a thousand bucks. So the state did increase some additional testing requirements under PFAS. But I don't know if it's affected in what they're doing now. Can we table this until we get some information? Call. We don't need to pay this right away. Yeah. Definitely ask the question. Yeah, no, the questions have to be asked. I would say we need to ask the question. Yeah, you got to change the ATD up there. Well, so I already emailed them that. That I've already reached out to them for to update the names. Um, They didn't respond to me yet on that, but I think I sent that this morning. What else, is, what else is needed? So, what we take charge of that column or either you want it, what you want. No, <laughs> you okay with it, Chris? Yes, okay. Once you feel you're part of the group until the end of March. I don't want to get too far into that. <laughs> I don't. I don't want Tyler coming to my house looking for paperwork. Expect you to call. My driveway's too long. He won't be up. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, they say they expect it to be fixed out. It may not be there. So. Yeah, just like a lawyer. Okay. Um, meeting in two weeks, we'll have a public hearing. You didn't put a time down. You're going to do it at five o'clock? Yeah, it's at five o'clock. The hearing says that. I don't think I wrote it on this, though. Sorry. Yeah, okay. They accept the uh, highway block grant in the amount of $16,870.76. So I'll be on the 20th. Okay. Um, one of these phases is going to be it's not estimate completion is March of next year the three or five years right but if they don't complete that until March I wonder if that includes the lab so if they take the samples so we don't get the lab fees back our books will be closed so I'm wondering what that's going to do to this because that right there is seventy six hundred dollars with thirty five hundred dollars in lab fees, mm -hmm. so that's almost our whole what we are estimating for the budget, and that's not even gonna that's estimated to be completed in March of twenty five. What if if we do the whole thing be five thousand dollars that we're budget? Well, unless that took place because it says that. Uh, like the lab fee will be built direct with, uh, as a direct expense. So, I mean, if they didn't complete that until March 25, we wouldn't get that bill until March 25, sure. which our uh, books would be closed to 24, so it can't be posted to as a 24 expense. Okay. But we should have an understanding of, you know, what what's going to happen. Yeah, so I'd happen. like to know what that what that means, you know, right. what, that's, what that actually does as far as like a budgetary 
saying, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's why it said this. And like what Chuck said, if we're supposed to do all welds, why are they all set page? But it's, that's why I have to in the detail of when the timing of the stuff is important. Right. And what's involved, why the difference in the prices. I and mean, that's the $11,100 right there that mm -hmm. is 2025. So. I remember the first time we did it, they actually came out and they, they went to everybody's house with a notification. Right. There were a bunch of people that weren't home, so they had to reschedule stuff coming back in a few weeks, and some people were even beyond that another few weeks. Okay. So they weren't able to collect the samples on a timely basis. I'll, I'll get I'll set up a phone conference to kind of look at it. What was this guy? Yeah, yeah. the first test was 1,000 foot radius, and then they didn't find any contamination in the wells. So then they cut it back to 500 feet. And I think the only contamination was the well at the transfer station itself. Number two. Which, oh, they, right. yeah. which they don't even drink the water anyway because of the stuff in it. Hello, Coleman. Okay. Uh, anything else? Either one of you? No. Nope. All right. All I can say is that. Uh, with a road contract tally is doing a damn good job on the roads. Mm -hmm. yes. Pushing that snow back. <laughs> so it's nice. All right. And we'll open Why it up there. Non public. Try to be civil. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll start with the question you know, we're already right? going to answer. Uh, ask. Yeah. You can answer. Are the records back in town? Joe. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I think the health officer <laughs> said that uh, he had everything he needed. Okay. Yeah, he's good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you to the police department. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have anything else? Okay, we do have a request for a non public. So we'll do that and nothing else after that. So uh, we'll make a motion to go in the non public under RSA 9183 QC legal. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Siemens, aye. Aye.